Uh, all right. Let's see here. Oh, you could hear me. You could hear me okay. I could hear you. All right, great. Well, first of all, praise to the Most High. Uh, happy Shabbat uh, to everybody who's tuned in and who will tune in. And um, yeah, man, um, it's great to be on this road, you know. Uh, just keeping the commandments, you know. Um, all praises, you know, I was able to... Uh, um, link up with uh, Brother Sean there and uh, start the Passover when uh, yesterday, day before yesterday. Um, that was pretty awesome. And uh, and the most I've just been working this week, you know, um, continually bu bubbling up the Third World War, you know, and uh, just waking up his people, man, you know, and also passing judgment on um you know uh wicked israelites too you know because i see the most high um uh kind of uh embarrassing you know some of these um uh so-called israelites who you know just basically are taking uh the most high's walk for a papi show so all praise to him for the mer the great mercy mercies and the great judgments that he's um bringing on the earth uh, in this time so uh without further ado, let me just close my door. Uh let's get into it. So um what we're gonna look at today is uh how our ancestors kept the first fruits. Um within this lesson, I had uh planned to uh, break down a lot of the weights and measures um, that our ancestors used to use. Um, uh, but I'm not happy with the, the accuracy. I'm not happy with the information I got. And I'm not confident uh, uh, enough through the precepts and the information that I got to, 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 to confidently teach um, this thing to you guys. So I'm gonna do more work um uh, and more research on it to uh to uh to uh you know try and bring uh the most accurate information that I can uh, find out there. Uh Shalom brother Chris. Shalom. Yeah bro. Uh you want to read today? I didn't hear you. Yeah, I can read. All right, cool. Okay, so we're going to start with um, uh, Numbers 28. And uh, we'll, we'll be going back and forth from Numbers 28 to the other um, scriptures that we have. And we're going to see a couple of things. And you guys are going to start to realize a couple of things as we go through these um, these scriptures here. So Numbers 28 from verse 26. Just give me one second to get um to get situated better. Okay, one second. No problem. Uh, in the meantime, I can bring it out. Um, Numbers 28 from verse 26. It says, Also, in the day of the first fruits, when ye bring a new meat offering unto Yahweh, after your weeks be out, ye shall have an holy convocation, ye shall do no servile work. So I'll read that again. It says, also in the day of the first fruits, right? When, when we do what? When we bring a new meat offering unto Yahweh, we shall have a holy convocation and do no work, no uh, servile work. So, what is this new meat offering, right? We looked at this uh, uh, in uh, some of our previous lessons that the meat offering is actually the grain offering, right? 
And if we go up to verse 5, we can see that real quick. It says, And the tenth part of an ephah of flour for a meat offering, mingled with the fourth part of an hin of beaten oil. It is a continual burnt offering, which was ordained in Mount Sinai for a sweet savor, a sacrifice made by fire unto Yahweh. All right. Now watch this. If I go from four, it says, the one lamb shall thou offer in the morning, the other lamb shall thou offer at the even. So this is actual meat being offered to the Most High, right? And then it says, and a tenth part of an ephah of flour for a meat offering. So how can flour be a meat offering? Flour is not meat, right? Um, so that's how we know from the precepts that this meat offering doesn't actually mean meat. And let's go to Leviticus chapter 2 and verse 1. Leviticus chapter 2 and verse 1. It says, uh, And when any will offer a meat offering unto Yahweh, his offering shall be of fine flour. You see that? And he shall pour oil upon it and put frankincense thereon. So when you see meat offering, you know it's not talking about, um, you know, actual meat. It's actually talking about grain, right? That's why it keeps saying your, your meat offering should be a fine flour. And if you check other translations, they use grain offering, okay? So... How is the new grain offering offered? Because we're gonna we're looking at how we kept the first fruits, or rather how our ancestors kept the first fruits. So, how is the new grain offering offered according to Yahweh? Watch this. Numbers 15. Numbers 15 and uh, from verse 3, it says, I'll go from verse 1. And Yahweh spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel and say unto them, When ye be come into the land of your habitations, which I give unto you, and will make an offering by fire unto Yahweh, a burnt offering, or a sacrifice in performing a vow, or in a free will offering, or in your solemn feasts to make a sweet savor unto Yahweh of the herd or the flock, then shall he that offereth his offering unto Yahweh bring a meat offering of a tenth deal of flour mingled with the fourth part of an hin. Of oil. You see that? And these are the things that I uh, wanted to give you guys some modern numbers on, but again, I'm still researching it because I don't like what I've found so far. Um, uh, I don't, I can't confidently stand on it as true. So I'm, I'm still uh, researching it. So it said, um, you have to, in verse four, he shall, then shall he that offereth his offering unto Yahweh. Bring a meat, meaning a grain offering, of a tenth deal of flour mingled with a fourth part of a hin of oil. All right. So there's a certain mix that he he even gives you to make sure you have nice ni a nice offering. You understand a nice grain offering, a proper dough. Right. Um. Let's see here. Another interesting thing about this particular scripture is watch this. He tells you that um, this is what you should do when you're offering any offering by fire made to Yahweh, right? So this is a nice um, sort of uh, streamlined um, uh, uh, set of information to show you how to uh, make various offerings to the Most High. So it says if you're, in verse 3, it says if you're offering a burnt offering, right, or a sacrifice in performing a vow, right, or a freewill offering, 
right? Or even offerings from our solemn feasts, which is coming up, like and and also feasts like the Sabbath, right? The Sabbath and the and the new moon, right? Or you can do these things on those days to make an offering to the Most High, right? Uh, let's see. Uh, in verse three here. It says, all your solemn feasts to make a sweet savor unto Yahweh, right? Of the herd or of the flock, right? So whenever you offer these, these animals, what you, uh, for these particular offerings, right? Uh, it says, you shall offer his offering, uh, sorry. Then, verse four, then shall he that offereth his offering unto Yahweh bring a grain offering, right, of a tenth deal of flour mingled with the fourth part of an hin of oil, right? Watch this. And the fourth part of an hin of wine for a drink offering shall thou prepare with the burnt offering or sacrifice for one lamb, right? So the Mosa is showing you whenever you bring a meat offering, you also got to bring a grain offering and you got to bring a, 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 a drink offering with it. And he tell you exactly what they are. So you can use this, this chapter here to see how to properly offer the offerings for the feasts. If you're offering um, um, an animal of the flock or the hood, meaning um, a lamb or a, a cow or one of their cousins, right? You can see uh a streamlined uh, this is basically a cheat sheet this is a cheat sheet for for the for uh, making the offerings of the um cattle um the small cattle which is the lamb etc the goat etc um or uh the bigger cattle which is you know the cows and and the ox and and their relatives okay so let's see here Verse 27 uh, in uh, Numbers 28. I can start reading off here. All right, cool. Verse 27. Okay. Um, this is the book of Numbers, chapter 28, and verse number 7. But you shall no, offer... 27. 27. 20, verse number 27? Yeah. Yeah, numbers 28 and verse 27, you said, right? That's right. Okay. Um, but you shall offer the burnt offering for a sweet savor unto the, unto Yahweh, two young bullocks, one ram, seven lambs of the first year, and their meat offering of flour mingled with oil, three-tenth deal of unto one bullock, two tenth deal unto one ram. Right. Um, that's that wait, wait, that's all I want. One second. One second, please. One sec. I just want to grab my headphones quick. One second, please. No problem. Somebody's snapping and cracking and popping all over the place. All right, let's see here. Bluetooth. Brother Chris, you there? I'm here. 
Okay, perfect. I can hear you uh, just fine. Peace history. All right. So, <clears throat> where were you, bro? Can you so, hear me? Chris, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Uh, read 27 again for me, please. 27. Um, this book of Numbers, chapter 28 and verse number 27. But ye shall offer the burnt offering for a sweet savor unto the Lord, two young bullocks, one ram, seven lambs of the first year. Right. So stop right there. Ye shall offer the burnt offering for a sweet savor unto Yahweh. Right. Um, two young bullocks, one ram, seven lambs of the first year. So notice a couple of things. Uh, the first thing it says is offer a young bullock. Why? Why? Why you guys think that is? Why you think you say offer a young bullock as opposed to a grown one? I'm not sure why. Well, you ever tried holding a a a, a full grown bull and and cut it short? No, never, never tried doing that. No. no, well, yeah, definitely don't want to try that one. <laughs> you don't want to try wrestling a a a full grown bull, right? The most is just making it easier for us. That's why he said, um, offer the young bull, right? Because it's just much easier to handle. When you read that scripture, uh, well, actually, when you read um. Other scriptures, it talks about putting your, your hand on the head of the animal, right? Um, I don't know if you guys are familiar with that. Yeah, it actually says, um, it doesn't say hand, it actually says your strength. Put your strength um, on the head of the animal, meaning hold the animal, right? And, and slaughter it, right? So that's much easier to do with a young bull than with... Um, you know, uh, uh, an old, a, a fully grown bull, right? Um, can everyone see my video as well? Yes. Okay, good, good. All right. So, it also says here, you shall offer a burnt offering for a sweet savor to the Most High. So, what is what is the burnt offering, and how does it, uh, how is it offered? Leviticus one. I will read from one to nine. So how did we offer this burnt offering? And what did it consist of? Sorry, what verse? Leviticus one, you can start at the beginning. And we're going until nine. Okay. Um, this is the book of Leviticus, chapter one and verse number one. And the Lord called unto Moses and spake unto him out of the tabernacle of the congregation, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel and say unto them, If any man of you bring an offering unto the Lord, ye shall bring your offering of the cattle, even of the herd. And of the flock, if his offering be a burnt sacrifice of the herd. Right, so stop right there, right? Again, just reiterating that your offering has to be the cattle, um, the the herd, out of the herd or out of the flock. So we can't really bring fish as like a a, a burnt sacrifice. It, it's not in the Bible. We can't bring it as as that. Now this may be able to be brought as another holy offering that you cook up and you offer to the Most High in your regular pot. But anything that you want to put on uh, his altar, he's very, very specific about it being small cattle or large cattle. And then as you're going to see uh, later on, he also talks about birds, okay? Certain birds. Go ahead. Verse number three. If his, burnt, if his offering be a burnt sacrifice of the herd, let him offer a male without blemish. All right. He shall offer it of his own voluntary will at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation before okay, the Lord. Right there. So 
listen to that ordinance. It says, okay, you're supposed to offer it of your own voluntary will, so nobody's supposed to force you to go make the offering. And then you offer it at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation, right? That's the ordinance, right? So essentially at the door of the church building, that's where you were supposed to make your offering, be it a, a, a peace offering, a, a thanks, a free will offering, all of these things, read on. And he shall put his hand up upon the head of the burnt offering, and mm -hmm. it shall be accepted for him to make an atonement for him. Read on. And he shall kill the, the bullock before the Lord, and the priest Aaron's sons shall bring the blood and sprinkle the blood round, round about upon the altar that is by the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. All right, so one second. Who has a tabernacle right now? A any of you have a, a, a tabernacle uh, where we can uh, kill the animal and go sprinkle um, the blood? No. No. Okay. All right. Read on. And he shall flay the burnt offering and mm -hmm. cut it into, into his pieces. Right. So that means flay means skin. So you shall skin the burnt offering and cut it into his, his pieces. Go ahead. And the sons of Aaron, the priests, shall put fire upon the altar and lay the wood in order upon the fire. And the priests, Aaron's sons, shall lay the parts, the head and the fat, in order upon the wood that is on the fire, which is upon the altar. But his inwards and his legs shall he wash in water, and the priest shall burn all on the altar to be a burnt sacrifice, an offering made by fire of a sweet savor unto the Lord. Right. So so there's a couple of things here. You notice they burned the legs. They didn't eat it. They burnt it. They burned their head. Right. They washed the legs in water. And they also washed the innards uh, in water. Right. And I'm led to believe the intestines they threw away, right? Because as we read on, we're going to see with the bird, they took out um, the the entire innards of the bird and threw it away, including the intestines, because who wants to burn dung on the Mosai altar, right? And there's a scripture that tells you that when dung was burnt, um, they went outside of the camp, right? And burned the dung right, uh, uh, outside of the camp in the place of ashes, right? Uh, so let's see. So this is the ordinance for um, if the animal comes out of the herd, right? Read on. Meaning number 10. If it's a cow, if it's a cow or a cow type yeah. animal, for example, an ox, or uh, what, what what are the cow type animals can you eat? Mm. Um a moose, or not moose, deer. You can eat deer. Um what else? Okay, like antelope, yeah, all those type of things. Yeah. So anything I like that you, you come moose? and bring to sacrifice. Did you say something, Ray? Okay, I guess not. I yeah, said I think you can, I think you can eat moose. I'm pretty sure moose is um. Yeah, it has the the hoof sensor. Yeah, and it chews the cud. Okay, I I'm not sure. I never I never looked up the moose to see if 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 it's good to go. Uh, giraffe. I know you can eat giraffe. Oh, I didn't even know that giraffe. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that's a lot of food, man. <laughs> You feed a tribe for like what a month or at least, man. Off a giraffe, man. Let me mm. check. Does moose have uh, hooves? I guess hooves. Oh yeah, bro. Wow, moose can be eaten. Did not know that. There you go. Well, next time I see a moose, 
uh, lunch time. <laughs> yeah, they chew the cud and they have and they have um the correct feet. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. I did not know you could eat moose. Great, that's a big animal too, man. Lots of meat. Okay. Um. So go from ten, please. Verse number 10. And if his offering be of the flock, namely of the sheep or of the goat for a burnt sacrifice, he shall bring it, uh, he shall bring it a male without blemish, and he shall kill it on the side of the altar northward before the Lord. Right. And the priests, Aaron's sons, shall sprinkle his blood round about, round about upon the altar. And he shall cut it into his pieces with his head and his fat. And the priest shall lay them in order on the wood that is on the fire, which is upon the altar. But he shall wash the inwards and the legs with water. And the priest shall bring it all and burn it upon the altar. It is a burnt sacrifice, an offering made by fire of a sweet savor unto, unto Yahweh. Right. So notice here, these burnt sacrifices, they just burn in it. Yeah. They're just being burnt. Right? They chop it up and they burn everything. Right? Except, I believe, the dung. I don't believe they were they were um, burning the dung on the, on the um, altar at all. Well, and that's also, why they're washing the inwards, because they're getting rid of all the... Um all the, the, the dung in its intestines and all that stuff, you know, like all the, I'm sure that's probably what they're doing. I don't know if it, if, if it's actually there, but I'm sure that's probably what they're doing, getting rid of all, all the, all the, all the, the dung. Mm -hmm. Where, where you reach? Um, I finished 13. Okay. So that, that was the ordinance for if you bring a, a sheep, right? It's basically the same thing as if you brought, um, as if you brought, um, um, like a cow or, or one of those big cattle, right? Now read on for the, uh, the fowls. Verse number 14, and if the burnt sacrifice for his offering to the Lord be of the fowls, then he shall bring his offering of two turtle doves or of young pigeons. And the priest shall bring it unto the altar and wring off his head and bring it on the altar. And the blood thereof shall be wrung out at the side of the altar. Right. And he shall pluck away his crop with his feathers and cast it beside the altar on the east part by the place of the ashes. And he shall cleave it with the wings thereof, but shall not divide it asunder. And the priest shall, shall bring it upon the altar, sorry, shall burn it upon the altar, upon the wood that is upon the fire. It is a burnt, off, it is a burnt sacrifice, an offering made by fire of sweet savor unto Yahweh. Right. So um, there's a couple of things going on here, but uh, before we go into that, can you guys see my screen or no? You're you're no, seeing me, but not the you. screen, right? Yeah. yeah, we only see you. Yeah. Okay, one second. See if I can share my screen. Okay, you can see that, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh... Whoops. Yikes. What's going on here? There we go. All right, watch this. Uh, hang on. Let's see here. Uh, Exodus 29 and 14, right? It says, the, um, But the flesh of the bullock and his skin and his dung shalt thou burn with fire without the camp. It is a sin offering. Now, this is specifically talking about the sin offering, right? So this is what they used to do with the sin offering. They make sure that they burn the skin, the dung, um, the flesh, right? 
um, outside of the camp, right, for the sin offering when it's a young bull. So that's what makes me think, um, you know, uh, they wouldn't have burnt uh, the intestines with the dung for the other offerings, uh, like on the um, on the the the, the regular um, altar, you know. So I mean, whether that's right or not, I can't say. But the, I'm telling, I'm showing you guys why I'm led to believe that they didn't burn um, dung on on the altar. Also, notice in um, in let's see, in verse fifteen of uh, Leviticus, the first chapter. It says, "And the priest shall bring it unto the altar, and wring off his head, okay, and burn it on the altar, and the blood thereof shall be wrung out on the side of the altar." Notice they didn't sprinkle the blood of the of the fowl on the altar, although they sprinkled the blood of the other ones. They just um, they just um ring out the blood on the side of the altar. It's like the bird blood's not even good enough to put on the altar or something, you know? And it says, and he shall pluck away his crop with his feathers. Now, what is this crop, right? Um, let's see here. What is this crop? Leviticus 1 and 16. One of the letter. Uh, it says here, look away his crop, his crop. Okay. The word is Mara'a. Um, and then says alimentary canal of bird. Okay. Alimentary canal of bird. So when I look this up, alimentary canal, the digestive order that follows bill, mouth, tongue, pharynx, esophagus, crop, proventricular, gizzard, small intestine, here. Right. Um, Okay, this is not a clear picture. Is this one clear? Nope. Okay. There's a crop of the bird right here. Right? So let's go back now. Uh, got too many windows open, man. Is this one? It's just in numbers there. Yeah. Sorry, no, Leviticus. Okay. Pluck away his crop with his feathers and cast it beside the altar on the east part by the place of the ashes, right? Um, and and he shall cleave the wings thereof, but shall not divide it asunder, and the priest shall burn it upon the altar, um, upon the wood that is upon the fire. It is a burnt sacrifice and offering made by fire, so you save unto Yahweh. So you're going to notice a pattern as you read about these different animals. Um, the, what happened with the sheep, for example, right? Did they take out the inwards? They take out the inwards of the, the, the sheep. Yeah, they did. <clears throat> his inwards and his legs, he washed in water. 
right? They made sure they wash it and then they burn all on the altar uh, to be a burnt sacrifice, an offering made by fire of a sweet savor unto Yahweh. So, Chris, even what you're saying um, is uh, is making a lot of sense to me. You understand what I'm saying? Why are they washing it in water? Because they're taking out, if there's anything in there and it's being burnt on there, they're taking it out. You understand? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Possibly probably the same reason with, with their legs and stuff like that. You know, like, they, when that's their dirty. home part where they, it's dirty. Yeah. Yeah. Now, you will also see where the Most High says, take out the, the rump, which is the tail completely um, from the animal, right? And and then he talks about burning it. We'll see that in, uh, I think, one of these scriptures we have coming up here. Okay, let's see. What else did I want here? I think that's all I want. I think that's all I want. But even though that um diagram showed just that small part, I, I don't believe they just took out that small part. I believe they took out the inwards of the bird, you know, um and, and burned the shell. Because even when you're butchering an animal, um uh um to consume it or, or, or whatever, they always take out the inwards, right? And leave the, the carcass uh, to be able to chop up. Right. What is this? The craw of the bird. Let's see what this is. Craw of bird. The stomach, especially of a lower animal. Right? So, so that last diagram there, you know, let me see there. It showed. A crop is a thin walled expanded portion of the elementary tract used for the storage of food prior to digestion. This is the anatomical, this anatomical structure is found in a wide variety of animals. It has been found in birds and in great animals, including gastropods, earthworms, leeches, and insects, right? So the crop, the crop is not just the stomach, according to their scientific, um, uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, uh, definition gizzard kidney pancreas crop small intestine yeah, yeah so the crop is distinct from the stomach right but one one um uh, when you go into one uh, extra set of uh, information here, one says the crop, the other says the crawl, right? The crawl being the stomach and the crop being the thing that's not the stomach. So anyway, the point is, I believe that the innards of the bird were, were taken out, right? So you can look into it and uh, sort of see what you get to. Okay, so let's see. Let's go to Leviticus uh, 3, and we'll read from verse 1. We'll kind of see the pattern of how they used to um, uh, prepare the animal. Ready? Yeah. Okay. Um, this is the book of Leviticus, chapter 3, and verse number 1. And if his oblation be a sacrifice of peace offerings, peace offering, if he offer it of the herd, whether it be male or female, he shall offer it without blemish before the Lord. Right. And he shall lay his hand upon the head of the offering and kill it at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. Mm -hmm. And Aaron's sons the priest shall sprinkle the blood upon the altar round about. And he shall offer the sacrifice of the peace offering 
an offering made by fire unto the Lord, the fat that covereth the inwards, mm -hmm. and all the fat that is upon the inwards. Okay, so stop, stop right there, right? It's, it's telling you the stuff that they used to um, take and offer, right? It starts giving you um, the, 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 the specifics. Right. So so read read the specifics again. The fat that what? Um, verse number three. And he shall offer the sacrifice of the peace offering, an offering made by fire unto the Lord, the fat that covereth the inwards, and all the fat that is upon the inwards. And the two kidneys and the fat that is on them, which is by the flanks. And the call above the liver with the kidneys, it shall it shall he take away. And continue. Uh, you, you read up to number four? <clears throat> I finished four, yeah. Okay. Um, and what happens? Because uh, that takeaway can be a bit confusing. So read five. Right. And Aaron's son shall burn it on the altar upon the burnt upon the burnt sacrifice which is upon the wood that is on the fire. It is an offering made by fire of sweet savor unto the Lord. So he takes it all and burns it. Right. So it tells you um, the fat that covered the inwards, the two kidney with the fat on it, right by the flanks, the call above the liver with the kidneys. He take it and he burn it all on the altar. It's an offering made by fire, a sweet savor unto Yahweh. So the, these these are the reasons that I don't believe they were burning, um, for example, again, the intestines, because it specifies the parts that they were taking and burning. You understand? So let's see here. Um, go from five, and we're going to read it up until uh, the end. Okay. Um, verse number five, and Aaron's sons shall burn it on the altar upon the burnt sacrifice, which is upon the wood that is on the fire. It is an offering made by fire of sweet savor unto the Lord. Right. And if his offering for a sacrifice of peace offering unto the Lord be of the, be of the flock, male or female, he shall offer it without blemish. Mm -hmm. If he offer a lamb for his offering, then shall he offer it before the Lord. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. he shall lay his hands upon the head of the offering and kill it before the tabernacle of the congregation. And Aaron's sons shall sprinkle the blood thereof round about upon the altar. Mm -hmm. And he shall offer the sacrifice of the peace offering, an offering made by fire unto the Lord the fat thereof and the whole rump and the what it shall, and the whole rump right it shall he take off hard by the backbone mm -hmm. and the fat that covereth the inwards and all the fat that is upon the inwards okay so stop right there right so let's see what the rump is right let's see what the rump is what is the rump? Okay, so that was um, Leviticus 3 and 9. The whole rump right here. That's um, Alia, Al Alaya, Alaya. Okay. It says here, the tail on sheep, the fat tail. You see that? Right? Brown driver Briggs, again, the one that's most respected, fat, ta fat tail of sheep, still accounted a delicacy in the East. So it's a delicacy to eat <laughs> sheep tail. Meanwhile, these brothers were taking that off and just burning it. 
Jacinius, who's even um, older than the brown driver Briggs, the thick and fat tail of a sheep, such as that of the peculiar kind of oriental sheep, the smallest of which, according to Golius, an eyewitness weighs 10 or 12 pounds. Um, compare Herodotus, Diodorus, and others cited by Bocart in Eros, um, part one, page 494, so on and so forth. Um, here's what I really want here. This is the translation they had. Let him take away the whole tail near the backbone, right? So when they um, get out of here. when they were when they were sacrificing, this is which one that you have there, the sheep. Is it the sheep that? Uh, yeah, yep, it's the sheep. Be a flock. Yep, be the flock of the male or female. You shall offer it without blemish, right? So you're not supposed to eat sheep tail, but they have sheep tail as a, a um, what do you call it, a delicacy, right? <laughs> and they're eating that. And the most I tell you, take that out and burn that, right? Um, where are we at here? Nine. So read on. Have from ten. And verse number 10, and the two kidneys and the fat that is upon them, which is by the flank and the call above the liver with the kidneys, it shall he take away mm -hmm. and the priest shall burn it upon the altar. It is, it is the food of the offering made by fire unto the Lord. Mm -hmm. And if he's, and if his offering be a goat, then he shall offer it before the Lord mm -hmm. and he shall lay his hand upon the head of it and kill it before the tabernacle of the congregation. So stop right there. Remember this is, this is a peace offering. This is not a sin offering. So we're not killing goats for sin offering. We, we can't do that. Right. If you have goats and you're killing them, it cannot be for sin offering. Right. But this is a peace offering. So it's all good. Go ahead. Um, verse 13. Verse 13. And he shall lay his hand upon the head of it and kill it before the tabernacle of the congregation. Right. And the sons right. of Aaron shall sprinkle the blood thereof upon the altar round the boat. Mm -hmm. And he shall offer thereof his offering, even offering made by fire unto the Lord, the mm -hmm. fat that covereth the inwards mm -hmm. and all the fat that is upon the inwards. Mm -hmm. and the two kidneys and the fat that it is upon them mm -hmm. which is by the flank and the call above the liver with the kidneys it shall it shall he take away right and the priest shall burn them upon the altar it is the whoops it is the food of the offering made by fire for a sweet savor, all the fat is the Lord's. So you see that? That's absolute proof that they were burning those the fat and those organs on the altar to the Most High. It says, um, the priest shall burn them upon the altar, which them, the pieces that he took, right? And then it says, um, all the fat is Yahweh's. You see that? Now read on. This here's here's a, here's the kicker right here. Verse number seventeen: mm -hmm. It shall be a perpetual statue for your generations throughout all your dwellings. Right. That ye eat neither fat nor blood. That ye eat neither what? Fat nor bl blood. Right. See that. So the most I said it's a perpetual statue throughout all our dwellings as Israel, that we don't eat no fat and we don't eat no blood. Now, many of our people don't know this, right? That's why a lot of our people are fat. <laughs> That's why a lot of our people are sick. I used to go get my blood pudding every Saturday in St. Lucia um, uh, uh, by the market, man. They, 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 they um, season up the blood and they cook it in the intestine, and I eat it. It was one of my favorite things to eat. 
right? Meanwhile, the most I say, don't eat no fat and don't eat no blood. And I'm eating my steak and I'm then I'm, I'm chewing on the fat. You know? Meanwhile, the most I say, don't eat no fat and don't eat no blood. You understand? Now, as as a thing, me and my wife, I, I was showing my wife the other day, right? And and you guys can think about this for yourselves. Um, what do you call it? Do you guys know what butter is made of? And cream. Anybody? Know what? So so butter and cream is is uh, fat from milk. You know when you boil the milk and you skim off the top and you drink the milk. They skim off the top, and then they put it in. I think something called a centrifuge, right? To make and uh, with some other stuff to make it like just kind of um solidify and become chunks, and then they sell it to us. <laughs> but, but now the fat that they're talking about here is the the fat around the organs, like the internal the internal fat, not like the fat that's that's on the skin between the between like the um it's it's what they call they call it um what do they call it um it is called mm, 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 mm. you can look it up yeah i'm trying to remember i'm trying to look it up um It's like suet. You know what suet is? No. Okay. Suet is a type of fat that's around all the inward parts, right? Mm -hmm. um, let me find it. If you look up, if you look up, since you can share your screen, look up like beef suet or whatever, right? But even when you buy, when you buy. Um, S-U-E-T? I think it's S-U-E-T. Or, or even I think it, they also call it towel or something like that or. Mm -hmm. But it's hard fat it's, about the kidneys and loins exactly. in beef and mutton that yields tallow and that is prepared, uh, that in prepared form is used in some pharmaceutical uh, ointments. That's right. That's what it is. It's it's that fat that's around its around its organs that's mm. packed in its insides, right? So now even even when you when certain restaurants or certain recipes, mm -hmm. um, they use that in a lot of food. Right, a lot of foods use it, mm -hmm. um, suet or 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 towel, especially you know you know what you what uses it, which I don't know if, and I was trying to figure out again if are we allowed to eat it, um, but beef patties they use it in beef patties, um, for some reason they use they use that that fat to make the the pastry of the patties. I believe it's the pastry of the patties, or it's or it's or it's the meat inside, but they use that fat in it for some reason. Right. which is the same type of in in inwards fat the fat that's around the kidneys around the liver even when you look at look at it i, I don't know if um i didn't look at your screen what you have there yeah it says the best patty crusts are made with beef suet but you can make also beef use suet. A traditional butter based short crust pastry, pastry or even a vegan version made with all shortening exactly uh, so a lot of places vegan, where you what's go all shortening I don't know, it's probably some vegetable kind of kind of thing. Well, I can't say um I can't say I am um surprised, brother. Right? Because you already know they're trying to defile uh everything that uh Israel eats, which is why mm -hmm. I brought up the 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 um the the uh uh process of butter making. Right? So me, I mean for conscience sake, I don't eat butter no more. You understand what I'm saying? Like, I, I don't, right? Because I'm just like, that's literally a, a, a brick of fat that they're selling, me, right? But that's me and where I'm at, right? Um, I brought it up so people can look at it, think about it, and then make their own decision, right? Um, let me see. The, 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 the yes. definition of shortening is any fat that is solid at room temperature. So, what? so that's like, uh, that's like Crisco, like... 
um that that type of different butter that you use and um it's like for different for when you make pastries and stuff because it makes it more flaky like the crisco fat Okay, which is uh, a vegetable fat or what? That's what the all shortening is. Yeah, shortening. Yeah, that it's it's a it's it's more greasy. Like um, it makes things more flakier when you use it as well. It's it's a white type of uh like a white type of I guess butter, right? Or it's basically just fat that you put into stuff to make it flaky and more oily. Okay, well it says here it's just. A veg. What the heck? Okay, well, I guess there's different shortening. Yeah, so there's different. Be made from animal or vegetable oil. Here we go. So you have the vegetable one with the hydrogenated or partially hydrogenated vegetable oil, and then um, obviously yeah. there's the other shortening, which, Lord knows what's in there. Yeah. So most most butter comes from the hydrogenated one, which comes from like palm oil, which is the vegetable. Yeah, most butter comes from that, and then like um the shortening itself is actual fat, like what they use in the beef patties and um all these old pastries that are like flaky. They use the shortening type fat. Yeah, so it says here one of the shortenings actually comes directly from pig, which I know that's what like it short another word for shortening is lo is lard. So I know one <laughs> yeah. of them definitely comes from pig, which you know we we know and uh, we don't we don't eat that. But it's, it's good. It's encouraging to see that there's a vegetable one as well. Yeah. All right. I, I, I don't believe butter is the same yeah. type of fat that is being, that's being discussed here. That's being that's talked about, right? It's talking about the, the actual inwards. The fat. Mm -hmm. Okay, when so you then read can, it, you eat, can you eat the fat that's on your beef, on your beef steak? What do you think? Um, I wouldn't eat it personally. No, I don't think to to eat it. But I don't think that's the same type of fat that that is that butter is made of. You know, like butter is not right. made from from fat like that. Butter is made from um milk fat. Yeah, milk fat. The fat that the the yeah milk fat. I guess yes. Yeah. Okay. Well, but again, it, like I said, I brought it up. Because it's information for for you guys to look at and make your own decision as to what you you you're gonna do. Yeah. Uh, at the end of the day, you know, I'm not the judge. I just thought it was interesting uh, to know because look, I brought that up and then uh, look, I find out the, this thing called beef sweat, which we definitely not supposed to eat, is in beef patty. Mm -hmm. It's in a lot of pastry, man. Yeah. So. Sorry, what is it called again? Um, suet. suet. S U E T. Okay. All right. Awesome. But it gives it, it. I believe it gives another name for it here in the um the call the, the call above the liver. If you look at look up look up call also, right? Yeah, I believe that. I looked that up before. I'll bring it up for everyone's edification. And that's like a big chunk of fat. That's also in between the um I believe that's what it is. Okay. Uh, da -da -da. What? One second. Yeah, it's that internal fat that wraps around their organs, like that mm -hmm. visceral fat or whatever. Yeah, this is what, in this us, is they... what um, I saw when I brought it up. Is that, yeah. it, in and us, they, they call it visceral fat. to make hot dogs, um, if I remember correctly. Um, oh, sure. call, call fat, also known as lace fat, fattening thin membrane surrounds the internal organs of, of some animals, such as cows, sheep, and pigs, also known as the greater momentum it is used as casing for sausages rolandes pates and various other meat dishes examples of such dishes are swiss aristoile french whatever whatever <laughs> british faggots that's funny serbian something something italian something something traditional ukrainian and russian cuisine call fat known as 
stomach was usually filled with cassia and liver and baked in a clay pot in a Russian oven and so on and so forth. Anyway, the point is they, they use it to make sausages. All right, so, all right, so moving on, let's go to um, verse 28 in, um, in Numbers. Uh, numbers 28, sorry, Numbers 28, and uh, I think I have it here. Numbers 28, verse 28. Verse 28. Yeah. Um, this is the book of Numbers, chapter 28, and verse number 28. And their meat offering of flour mingled with oil, three-tenth deal unto one bullock, two-tenth deal unto one ram. Right. So as I was saying earlier before, um, I don't have those measures in modern um, uh, units. I wasn't satisfied with the information that I got, so... You know, later we'll talk about it. We still have what two more weeks to be able to decipher what this is done. You know, what what those measures are. Um. Uh. Because these, this, you know, the the grain offering is one of the offerings we can kind of you know more more closely even follow because we have an opportunity to do that. And most of these offerings, you guys will see, we simply don't have the tools to be able to do these things. So what do we do? In, in in the interim. That's something we'll talk about uh, in, in a second. So it said the meat offerings, meaning the green offerings of flour, this should say fine flour, because the word here is, uh, da, 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 where is it? Da, da, is solet, okay? And when you see solet, they, they, they use it for flour or fine flour and then at the same what do you call it um many times they just drop the fine right um let's see here you see that you see how many times they use it as just flour but the thing is fine flour right um let's see if i have some precepts to show so that was it ezekiel 16. What is that? Ezekiel sixteen thirteen. Thus was thou decked with silver and gold. So this is the most I describe in the kind of um uh, you know um lifestyle that he had Israel living. Thus was thou decked. With silver and gold, and thy raiment was of fine linen and silk and broidered wool. Thou didst eat fine flour, right, and honey and oil, and thou was exceeding beautiful, and thou didst prosper into a kingdom. Okay, let's see what that word is there for fine flour. Is the same word. So let I see that same exact same word. Right, but they translate it as flower many times, and it says here yeah, once in the KJV they they um, translate it as fine flower, but really it's fine flower. All right, where were we? Um, numbers. Did we go to number fifteen, or we were in numbers twenty eight? I think we're in numbers 28 here. All right. Numbers 28, 28. The meat offering. Go ahead, um, uh, Brad Chris. Read 28 from, from the beginning again. Yes, please. Okay, this is the book of Numbers, chapter 28, and verse number 28. 
and their meat offering of flour mingled with oil, three-tenth deal unto one bullock, two-tenth deal unto one ram, a several-tenth deal unto that's, one lamb. That's, that's, that's all I want. That's all I okay. want. Okay. Right? So their green offering, um, um, and, and again, uh, what we're talking about is how our ancestors used to keep the first fruits. Right, so the Mosai, um, they they used to bring these um, burnt offerings of uh, cattle and and a small cattle and big cattle, so sheep and goats and cows and stuff. Then they also used to make sure they bring um, what do you call it, a grain offering, right? And then they also used to make sure they bring um, a drink offering as well, which we'll read about in a second. Right, so it says the green offering was of uh, fine flour mingled with oil. Again, uh, we know it's fine flour from the precepts uh, that we've been looking at the weeks before. And if the Mosai keeps asking for the best of everything, why would he want us to give him the the the, the regular thing in something like flour? Right. So we gotta you know put the precepts together and make sense out of nonsense. The meat offering of fine flour mingled with oil, three tenths deals unto one bullock and two tenths deals to one ram. So whenever you have a ram, you know, you're supposed to have two tenths deals, all right? Which, anyway, again, I'll, I'll get the, the proper measurements for you guys. Um, and you can, you can read, uh, you can read on, brother. Uh, did we go to number 15? No, we didn't. Okay, let's go there and read verse 3 and 4. Um, this is the book of Numbers, chapter 15, and verse number 3. And will make an offering by fire unto the Lord, a burnt offering or a sacrifice in performing start, a start vow. From two. <clears throat> start from 2. two. Um, speak unto the children of Israel and say unto them, when you come into the land of your habitation, you read this earlier before I started, I believe. Okay, great. Yeah, bring it on. Okay. Um, speak unto the children of Israel and say unto them, when you come into the land of your habitation, which I give unto you, and will make an offering by fire unto the Lord, a burnt offering or a sacrifice in performing a vow or in a free will offering, or in your solemn feast, to make a sweet savor unto the Lord of the herd or of the flock, then shall he that offereth his offering unto the Lord bring a meat offering of a tenth deal of flour mingled with the fourth part of an hin of oil. Right. And the fourth... Continue. That's it. No, that's, it. that's all I want. That's all I want. All right. So it's giving you the um the measures here for these particular offerings. All right. The only offering I don't see here is the peace one. All right. If there's any you guys don't see, bring it up. But the only one I don't see here is the peace offering. All right. Uh go back to um numbers twenty eight. Continue from 28 or 29? Um, uh, read 29 because it's going to show you here. He says, um, see, one sec. Okay, go ahead. This is the book of Numbers, chapter 28 and verse number 29. Uh, sorry, sorry. I, I want to point something out here, right? Notice it says, um, um, in Numbers 20, 28, the meat offering, um, and the meat offering of flour mingled with oil, three tenth deals unto one bullock, right? Two tenth deals unto one ram, right? A several tenth deal unto a lamb throughout the seven lambs. What does that mean? A several tenths deal is uh, unto one lamb. All that's saying is 
one tenth deal to each lamb of the seven lambs. That's all that's saying. How do we know that? Well, when you add up the scriptures, uh, he tells you here for the hood. Um, let me see. In your solemn feast to make a sweet table of the hood or of the flock, the hood of what? Goats. The flock of what? Sheep. Then shall he that offer his offering unto Yahweh bring a meat offering of what? A one-tenth deal of flour, right? Mingled with a fourth part of a hen of oil. So I just wanted to uh, point that out there because I don't want nobody to be confused and be like, why does this say three and the other one say one? So I just wanted to break that down. Go ahead. Numbers 20, 29. A several tenth deal unto one lamb throughout the seven lambs. Mm -hmm. And one kid of the goats to make an atonement for you. We're obviously not doing that because, you know, Yahweh Shai is the atonement. Go ahead. You shall offer them beside the continual burnt offerings, mm -hmm. his meat offering. They shall be unto you without blemish mm -hmm. and their drink offering. Right. So when we get, um, you know, lamb or or um, goats and stuff um, for our feast, right? Uh, how do we know that they're without blemish? We don't. Yeah, we don't. How do we know Unless that the first year? We don't. We don't. We 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 really don't even know if they're lamb, you know. Like, <laughs> oh. you're saying it could be a ram or something. It, who knows what it could be nowadays, man? Yeah, you know, we just have to take these people's word for it because we don't raise our own, our own animals. Yeah, well, better than that, I we just have to we gotta use grace. It's literally exactly. the only way to 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 do any of this that we're doing. You know, it's by grace. We're just trying the best that we can with what we have. You know? Okay. Um, you read, oh, um, for 31, I want to point out that it says, with their drink offering. Right? So these things um, for, for um, first fruits, our ancestors used to make sure, you know, they slaughter certain animals in a certain way, um, offer their, their, their burnt offerings. And then they also made sure they had grain offerings. And then they made sure they also had drink offerings. So just let's look at the drink offering real quick. Go up to um, verse 8 in the same chapter. Numbers 28 and verse number 8. And the and the other lamb shalt thou offer at even as the meat offering of the morning and as the drink offering thereof. Thou shalt offer it a sacrifice made by fire of sweet savor unto the Lord. Okay, I, I, I call out for all short. They go from seven and read um, seven. read up to eight. Or okay. You can just even read seven. It's called Okay, this is the book of Numbers, chapter 7, I mean, chapter 28, and verse number 7. And the drink offering thereof shall be the fourth part of a hin for one, for the one lamb. In the holy place shalt thou cause the strong wine to be poured unto the Lord for a drink offering. You see that? See how you do the drink offering? Yeah, you pour it out. You pour it out. Right? And he tell you what amount to pour out. Four part of an hin uh, per lamb, and you pour out the drink offering. So uh, that's where they get pouring out drinks from. It's the most high thing. And it's not to your dead homie. <laughs> you know? It's an offering to the, to the most high. That's where it comes from. All right. So let's go to Exodus chapter 20. So our ancestors were always pouring out the bottles to the most high. <laughs> Exodus 20 and what? 
24. This is the book of Exodus, chapter 20, and verse number 24. And the altar of earth thou shalt make unto me, mm -hmm. and shalt sacrifice thereon thy burnt offerings, mm -hmm. and thy peace offerings, mm -hmm. thy sheep, and thine oxen. Mm -hmm. In all places where I record my name, I will come unto thee, and I will bless thee. Right. Um, go read on. Verse number 25. And if thou wilt make an... Sorry. And if thou wilt make me an altar of stone, thou shalt not build it of hewn stone. For if thou lift up thy tool upon it, thou hast polluted it. Neither shalt thou go... I think that's all I want. Is that verse ended? You, you want... Hmm? That was it on that verse there? I think I lost the brother. Hold on. Exodus 20 and 24. Uh, verse 25, and if thou wilt make me an altar of stone, thou shalt not build it of hewn stone, for if thou lift up thy tool upon it, thou hast polluted it, right? And, uh, you know, that saying, if you're going to build an, first he said, build me an altar of wood, but he said, if you're going to build an altar of stone, you can't, um, you can't use no tools on it, right? Because you polluted it if you use a tool on it, right? What does hewing mean? Cutting, hewing, dressed stone, right? So if you refine the stone using a tool, the most high said you have polluted it. Why? Because the man made the whole earth, right? And he 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 made everything perfect. He made it and said it was good. So don't put any tools on my stuff. It's good. Right? You're polluting it with your man made stuff. Right? With your man made tool. Um, you there, brother Chris? I'm here, yes. Okay, cool. So, uh, which one of you has an altar of stone or an altar of earth to do the most high sacrifices on? No, no I, I don't, don't I don't have an altar of uh, stone or, or, an, or an altar of earth, right? Um, you know, I don't have uh, all these uh, sheep and goats and all of these things right right um let's see what else we don't have <laughs> numbers uh go from uh uh go to numbers 28 and go from verse one this is the book of numbers chapter 28 and verse number one and the lord spake unto moses saying command the children of israel and say unto them my offering and my bread for my sacrifices made by fire for a sweet savor unto me shall ye observe to offer unto me in their due season. So th this is a commandment. The most I said, hey, make sure you do these things. All right, go ahead. And thou shalt say unto them, this is the offering made by fire, which ye shall offer unto the Lord. Two lambs, of the of the first year without spot day by day for a continual when? burnt off day by day for a continual, for a continual burnt offering. offering so so as a nation every day we supposed to offer two lambs of the first year without spot to the most high for a continual burnt offering it's just supposed to be roasted on the fire Right? Uh, every morning and every evening. Read on. Verse number four. The one lamp shalt thou offer in the morning, and the other lamp shalt thou offer at evening. And a tenth part of an ephah of flour for a meat offering, mingled with the fourth part of an hin of a beaten, sorry, of beaten oil. Right, and where is this supposed to be? Um, where is this supposed to be offered? On, 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 on what? On the stove, on the grill. 
No, on the altar. On, on the altar, made of earth, right? Probably meaning clay, right? Um, because we know you're able to make a proper proper oven and proper stove out of clay, um, or a whole stone, right? That you just arrange and you know put in such a way as to um be an oven and or a stove. Right? That's what that's supposed to be offered on. Right? Read on. Verse number six. It is a continual burnt offering, which was ordained in Mount Sinai for a sweet savor, a sacrifice made by fire unto the Lord. Right. And the drink offering thereof shall be the fourth part of a hin for the one lamb for one in lamb the holy Lord. place. In the holy place shalt thou cause the strong wine to be poured unto the, the Lord for a drink offering. So where and the is other... the strong wine supposed to be poured out? Just anywhere? No, in the holy place. In the holy place of the temple. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. And the other lamb shalt thou offer at even as the meat offering of the morning. And as the drink offering thereof, thou shalt offer it, a sacrifice made by fire of sweet savor unto the Lord. And on the Sabbath day, two lambs of the first year without spot and two tenth deal of flour for a meat offering mingled with oil and a drink offering thereof. Okay, so stop right there. So every, every Shabbat, Two lambs supposed to get uh slaughtered. Yeah. Um, and we gotta have a grain offering, right? And the drink offering as well. Every Shabbat. A anybody have lambs for for killing on, on the Shabbat on the earthen or or or, or stone built um altar? Anyone? I don't have any. Bro Chris, you have? No. Bro Sean, you have? Is he there? No, I don't. Right? Read on. Uh, I think you're at 10. At 10. This is the burnt offering of every Sabbath. Besides the continual burnt offerings. Sorry, beside the continual burnt offering and his drink offering. And in the beginnings of your months... You shall offer a burnt offering unto the Lord. So Two young bullocks. New moon. Sorry. So that's every new moon. Every new moon, uh, uh, there's a burnt offering supposed to go up. Two young bullocks, young bulls. Go ahead. And one ram. And one ram. Mm -hmm. Seven lambs of the first year without spot. So new moons, you have to burn enough animal. Yeah. Yeah. And three tenth deal of flour for a meat offering, mingled with fl mingled with oil, for one bullock, and two tenth deal of flour for a meat offering, mingled with oil for one ram. And a several tenth deal of flour mingled with oil for a meat offering unto one lamb, mm -hmm. for a burnt offering of a sweet savor, a sacrifice made by fire unto the Lord. All right. Your drink offering shall be half half an hin of wine unto a bullock, and the third part of a hin of a hin unto a ram, and the fourth part of a hin unto a lamb. This is the burnt offering of every month throughout the months of the year. Right. And one kid of the goats for a sin offering unto the Lord shall be offered besides the continual burnt offering and his drink offering. All right. So stop right there. Right. And of course, we're not offering the goat for a sin offering. Right. Because of Yahweh Shai. So I read all that to, to, to see which one of us can keep this ordinance to perfection. Which one of us has all the goats and uh, 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 and the, the the sheep and the cows and the flour and the wine to keep these ordinances, right? 
Also, notice he says, speak unto the children of Israel and make sure that that's what we're doing. So, I mean, as a nation, do we have the temple, the altar, the, the, the wherewithal, the unity to be doing these, these ordinances according to um, how the Most High say that we're supposed to do them? No. No. Right? It's not happening. Right? So, what do we do? Well, we spoke about this a little bit last week. I will, and and uh, I'll get into it um, deeper next week. But this is where, you know, you do the sacrifices that you can. The ordinances that you can keep well, perfectly, you do. What you can't, you do what you can, right? And you leave the rest to your hour shy. Because none of us, and as a nation, we don't have the power to keep these uh, uh, ordinances as they should be kept. You know? We have to focus on our spiritual sacrifices, which we spoke about last week. You know, love for one another, waking people up uh, from sleep, you know, keeping the commandments, right? Uh, um, giving the sacrifice of praise, right? Offering the calf of our lips, you know, like I brought up last week. These are the things that we can do every day as the Most High um, call for, right? Every uh, uh, week as he called for, for the Shabbat, right? Um, um, every month, right? As he called for, and at all our feasts, right? This is how, our, our, how important our spiritual sacrifices have, have become. Because the spiritual sacrifices, we can do a hell of a better job doing the spiritual sacrifices than we can um, doing the ordinances, right? Now, we shouldn't give up. If you have the ability to do those things, hey, do them, you know? But in, in, in lieu of being able to do them, you know, be strong on your spiritual sacrifices. You know, Shabbat come, sing to the Most High. Take some time to sing. Get a little songbook and sing some tunes to the Most High. Give the Most High some praise. Maybe play some songs I used to like uh, in the world that give praise to the Most High and sing along. You know? But offer those spiritual sacrifices to the Most High because we're missing a lot of the ordinances. You know? So next week, we'll look at some um, of the ordinances we can keep today, um, you know, and um, and we'll take a closer look at our spiritual sacrifices, and then we'll go from there, right? So with that, all praise to the Most High. Happy Sabbath to everybody. Um, any questions, comments? It's very thorough. What's that? I everything's explained. All praises. Thank you. You're welcome. Great lesson. All praises. All praises. All praises. All, all right. Praises. Well, everyone, have a great week. Everybody's good. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Everybody, have a great week. Don't don't walk the walk by yourself. You know, and uh, continue to offer your spiritual um sacrifices. Um. Because uh, these things are, um, it says the Most High is happy with these things, right? So <laughs> let's not feel bad about not being able to kill the sheep and stuff. Because it says the Most High is happy with these sacrifices. Let me see if I can find that scripture. Where is it? Okay, happy Sabbath, everyone. Bye. All right, bye. 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 Stop the recording.
ओके okay. uh...